debate was uh, yes, that thrombolysis should always be offered to patients that are eligible for thrombectomy. So basically what I have uh, done during my um, presentation, uh, I actually presented uh, the current guidelines from the European Stroke Organization uh, that recommend intravenous thrombolysis uh, is administered to eligible patients before endovascular thrombectomy. And uh, actually, I provided evidence uh, chronologically. I started uh, with uh, the clinical evidence since uh, 2014, 2015, uh, where uh, when the results of the big five, uh, the studies such as Mr. Clean, uh, Escape, Extent, IA, Swift Prime, and uh, Revascat, uh, demonstrated clearly uh, the effect of mechanical thrombectomy. Um, however, later in um, 2016, uh, a Hermes meta-analysis on individual patient data was performed and uh, it showed that uh, thrombectomy is effective uh, after previous IV uh, thrombolysis. And uh, then um, I presented uh, another meta-analysis from 2017 uh, performed by mystery and collaborators that also showed that patients uh, who uh, were treated with uh, mechanical thrombectomy and IVT uh, had better functional outcome expressed as a modified ranking score from zero to two um, after the procedure and also after 90 days. And uh, I also presented some other clinical studies that have clearly showed the uh, effect of the bridging therapy uh, compared to patients who were treated only by uh, mechanical thrombectomy. I also presented um, the trials um, such as uh, from 2021 and 2022, uh, such as uh, skipped skip trial from Japan, uh, direct safe from Australia, uh, from Europe, uh, Mr. Clean, no IV, and Swift direct uh, that uh, showed that did not show non inferiority of uh, mechanical thrombectomy alone uh, compared with uh, mechanical thrombectomy uh, after bridging therapy with uh, IVT. Um, for example, uh, Mr. Clean, no IV. Uh, this uh, clinical uh, trial showed that uh, mechanical thrombectomy alone uh, was neither superior nor inferior to intravenous alteplase that was followed by EVT uh, with uh, regard to disability outcome and 90 days um, after stroke. And uh, what is important to emphasize is that uh, the incidence of symptomatic intracerebral hemorrhage uh, was similar uh, in the uh, two groups. Uh, and also another trial such as direct safe uh, that was aimed to provide unique information regarding the impact of uh, direct thrombectomy uh, in patients with large vessel occlusion, uh, including patients with basilar artery uh, occlusion, actually was um, early uh, terminated uh, due to several uh, reasons. However, um, the end point was reached and uh, actually uh, it was shown that uh, foregoing IV thrombolysis and proceeding to mechanical thrombectomy directly in um, patients uh, is uh, non-inferior and uh, may lead to uh, worst uh, patient outcomes. Uh, so basically, um, it was uh, shown that there are arguments uh, in favor or of bridging therapy. Uh, such as um, that um, application of IVT uh, allows early reperfusion. Uh, it also allows uh, thrombosoftening uh, and facilitates successful reperfusion. 
Uh, there is also a chance of reperfusion in patients uh, with failure uh, with mechanical thrombectomy, and uh, there is reperfusion of remaining distal occlusions after mechanical thrombectomy. So basically, for now, uh, we have evidence that uh, IVT uh, is uh, and uh, remains standard in the treatment of acute stroke even before mechanical thrombectomy. However, uh, we have to acknowledge that uh, there should be uh, no time delay and that in case of proximal intracranial vascular occlusion, uh, immediate initiation of mechanical thrombectomy uh, should be uh, done.